This is about ding, 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 ding. Boys and girls, today I want to talk about bass guitar. Finally, dirty, distorted bass. Dangle, dangle. If you're not into dirty bass tones, don't watch this video, it makes no sense. Because today I will give you a lot of information about how to record a bass guitar and how to make it sound brutal. I will actually show you exactly how to dial in this tone. Beautifully dirty, right? Lovely. I love that tone. Dang, dang, dang. I love it. Anyway, today I want to show you exactly how to dial in that tone, what you've just heard. So there are no more excuses after watching this video. And um, yeah, just stay tuned. I will show you what to do. All you need is a good sounding bass guitar, uh, which you can't download. You need to buy it. I'm sorry. And you need a software that will cost you 30 or 40 bucks. Start saving now. Let's go. And by the way, I actually created a custom IR of my Ampeg 2x10 cabinet. You can see it here with two microphones, one miking the speaker, the other one miking the horn. And I mixed them together, created an IR, and you can get that IR today. But let's talk about the function of a bass guitar in a metal mix. First of all, like in any other music, it's low end, low end, low end. We want to have enough solid and clean low end to make our mix, our song sound fat. To hit you right in the, in the balls. Hit you right in the balls. That is the most sacred mission. Don't even think about adding distortion or other effects if you're not giving your band the right amount of low end. So that is functional. Low end. You will never get the same amount of low end with a high gain uh, guitar. No matter how low it is tuned. That clean low end that a bass guitar will give you. The second thing is what I call the dangle, 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 the mid bite of a bass guitar, and that is a metal thing. Why do we want that? How do we want a metal bass to sound? Metal is supposed to sound evil, brutal, rebellious, right? So adding distortion and adding mid bite, dang, 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 dangle, dangle, is something beautiful, something that supports the message of this music. And the cool thing is, by adding distortion, by adding mid bite, we are actually helping the bass guitar to be heard, to become audible in a dense metal mix. You know, high gain distorted metal guitars, they are like filtered pink noise. They will cover all frequency ranges and it's really hard to get anything, you know, jump at you, especially a bass guitar. By adding distortion, by adding that clank, that mid bite, we can make the bass audible and at the same time, we can make it, make it sound metal and sound brutal. What do you say, like two birds with one stone? Zwei Fliegen mit einer Klappe? Right. So those two things define a great bass metal tone. Solid, clean, low end, and dangle, dangle, dangle. But how do we get there? First of all, make sure, please make sure, you record a killer sounding DI track. That is the most important part. If the DI track is right, there are a lot of tools to make your bass sound metal and to make your bass sound great. If the DI sucks, it's gonna be really hard. You can get the low end right, but it's mostly impossible to get the right amount of dangle and to, to make the, the, the bass jump out of the mix. And that means you need a great sounding bass. I have several bases. Today I used this one, which is a Fernandez base. I don't know what it's called. It was pretty expensive. It was one of their latest models before they went out of business. And it's some kind of Fender Jazz copy, but with active EMGs. And it sounds like this. Quite nice. 
What you can do to find out if your bass guitar sounds metal is simply to unplug it and listen to the sound of the strings. The more they sound like a piano wire, the more dangle dangle they have, the more it will sound metal. It's that simple. The next thing you should check is the low end. Have a listen. It should be very consistent. And the more the unprocessed DI track already sounds like a clanky metal bass, the better it is. I also use passive basses. There's no real rules. We have an Esch passive bass. You can see it over there. We have some Fender basses. Um, there are a lot of cool basses out there. But if bass guitars sound too dull or too wooly, don't use them because you want the dangle. Solid low end plus dangle. The more the DI track sounds like that, the easier it is to get a great metal tone. So let's talk about the settings. There are no general rules, but again, you should listen to what it sounds like. Actually here, I'm using the neck pickup right now. Sounds like this. For me, it has enough dangle. Let's try the other one, the bridge pickup. Has more 1K dangle. But it sounds a lot thinner. So I prefer this one, the neck pickup. You can also mix them, but that sounds. But that sounds a little phasey. So I'm gonna go for this one. We also have an active EQ, and I like to boost the highs when I record bass, because, you know, that's, the more highs we have, um, the more they trigger the distortion of the amp or plugin we're using. So I'm boosting. Some of the highs. And sometimes I also boost the bass a little bit. Just a little bit. Be careful with that. You should do that when you play into a distortion so you can hear how it actually sounds. Too much bass might sound a little farty. Next thing, strings. Get some fresh strings. I put those on yesterday. I can already tell they have aged a little. They will quickly lose a lot of highs. And what you want is stainless steel strings. Nothing that says nickel. Because steel strings will sound more dangle dangle than the others. If you have enough money, you could buy the Pro Steel from Dadario. They sound great. If you don't have that much money, you can buy these ones. Warwick Red Label. Really cheap. They don't last that long, but they sound great. Make sure to have stainless steel strings and yeah, to have fresh strings on your bass when you record. Let's talk about this. This is a pick and it will make your bass sound metal. Your fingers won't, listen. Much better. So don't let any bass player tell you, hey, it's metal to play with my fingers, more feeling, blah, blah, blah. I know that Steve Harris exists and I know that there are people out there who can, can nail a great bass tone with their fingers, but why make it complicated? Just use this and you will have an instant dangle, all right? Tell your bass player I sent you. Fingers, not good. And finally, try to get the cleanest possible signal path into your DAW. A good sounding DI with a good sounding preamp or a good sounding interface. Mostly DIs and good preamps sound a little better and a little cleaner. All right, let me sum it up. You need a good sounding bass that sounds metal, that has a natural dangle even when the cable is unplugged and has enough low end. Next, you can support the dangle and the low end with the EQ and you need to find the right combination or the right pickup to support that metal tone once again. Next thing is get fresh strings that will help the dangle a lot and play with the pick. Clean signal path and you're ready to go. Let me show you how I got that dirty bass tone. I'm just using one track and basically only using one plugin. And that plugin is Mammoth from Aurora GSP. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. We will go from this 
to this. Beautifully dirty, right? Let me turn off all the plugins. You can see I'm basically using four plugins, but it's mainly just Mammoth. And Mammoth right now is the only plugin where I don't need anything else to add distortion or something else to get a great, extremely distorted bass tone. Let me show you what I do here. First thing, before I hit Mammoth, the main plugin, I will use compression. So here we got an instance of FabFilter Pro C2. Pretty basic stuff. I'm using the Opto compression, which is always great for bass. Attack and release are not too fast. I have a high cut on the side chain and it sounds like this. And you can see we're getting something like 5 or 6 dB of compression, but it sounds very natural. And this helps us to hit the distortion, the amp, which is the next plugin, a little more consistently. Let's open up a fresh instance of Mammoth DSP. Looks like this. The problem is the default preset sounds kind of shitty. So this is without. And. You should work on this because the plugin is great. Let me give you an overview of the plugin. We have a crossover frequency and this splits the signal into two channels. One bass channel down here, which won't be distorted and will be compressed. So we have a clean and massive low end and then the dirty distortion channel up here. Let me just solo the bass channel first. Let's have a listen. You can fine tune the frequency here. I try to go as low as possible usually because the higher you go, the more it might sound like two tracks, the less they will melt. You know what I mean? So I usually go to around 160 or something like this. I don't know what this bass thing is doing. I just know it sounds great. It adds bass. Perhaps it's a bass enhancement and compression. I don't know. It just makes the bass louder. Sounds really nice. And I can already hear that there's some compression going on or bass enhancement, I don't know. This channel just makes sure your low end sits right. And even if you wanna use another distortion, you can split the track and just use the mammoth bass. It's very effective uh, to get a clean sounding and great sounding low end. There's also a growl, which is clipping or distorting the low end, which is something that I don't need. Have a listen. So this is adding a lot of overtones. That's not what I want. Goodbye. Then there's a slam. I don't know if this is a clipper or a limiter or something. It starts distorting easily. I don't want that, but a little bit of it is nice. Okay, let's go to the other side, to the dirty channel. So we have an input here and we have three different drive modes. The red one, the purple one and the blue one. They all sound kind of different. This sounds more Ampeg to me. I don't know what it is, but this sounds more like, a, like an Ampeg head with that woody roar. But my favorite is this one. The blue channel, which sounds a lot more modern. Could be something like a Sans Amp or something like a Dark Glass pedal. And the cool thing is there is a lot of distortion. So you can go into high gain, where many plugins can't go. That's when you need guitar equipment. This is awesome. There's also a hot button, I haven't used it, but it even pushes things a lot more. So you can go really crazy. Okay, let's start here. Then we have an EQ, which is really effective and well done. I have to say that. Have a listen. Sounds good. Let's push the lows a little bit. 
And I love this mid band because it sits exactly around 500 hertz. That's what I believe, where which is the enemy of everything metal. That woody, shitty frequency. Let's remove it. So this, like removing, scooping the mids here, makes the bass sound more metal and makes it also sound cleaner in a good way. Then there's two buttons, one is called melt. I've never used it, I don't like that one, but I like that brood switch because it makes things brutal. It pushes the highs, I think, before the distortion or something, listen. And even if it sounds a little too much now, it really helps sometimes to make the bass jump out of a mix. Because very often, believe me, very often when people say, wow, what a great bass tone, you can't believe how much distortion you need to make a bass pop out of a mix. So a lot of high end and a lot of distortion is always welcome. That switch is great. Then we have an IR loader. You can load your custom IR and we have three different cabs here. The 610 is my favorite. This one sounds a little fuller, but also a little more woody. And this one sounds more like a guitar cab. I like the 6x10, sounds great. But you know what? I felt like, why shouldn't I include my own Christian Kohler preset into this plugin and include my own Christian Kohler impulse response. So yesterday I mic'd my cabinet, just as I told you, and I created an impulse for you guys. That means if you buy this plugin, you can get exactly the tone I dialed in for this video, including the IR I created, okay? You'll find a link down here in the description where you can buy the plugin, including the Christian Cola bass preset, dangle dangle, and my IR. So let's have a listen to those settings with my dangle dangle IR, and let's mix in the clean bass channel a little bit. That sounds nothing but wonderful, right? Dangle, dangle, fucking dangle. And finally, we got another really cool sounding parameter here, and that is the mammoth itself. And that is what I call the ultimate dangle control. Have a listen. So this adds more dangle than you will ever need, around 3 or 4K. Lovely. So this sounds like a great bass tone to me. To make it sit in a mix, I usually do two things. The first thing is another compressor. You can simply copy the settings of the first compressor. Here it is. So I'm adding another 2 to 3 dB of compression, again, to make it sit tight in the mix. And then I will load an EQ, where I make some broadband moves. You need to understand which frequencies are important. Let's have a look at this. You can see the dangle here. So it's important to have an EQ band here to be able to control the dangle. The second thing is what I call the high-end rattle, kind of new metal corn frequency here. This is also a very important frequency. It can make a bass jump right out of the mix and mostly a death metal and grindcore, this sounds wonderful. 
third frequency is the lower mid-range, upper bass region around here. This is where you can scoop the bass furthermore and make it a little cleaner and make it sit better in the mix. You can actually remove a lot of energy here and that will help your mix. And finally, we have the real bass down here. I start with those four bands in general. And that way I can sculpt the bass so it sits right in my mix, which depends on the guitar tone that I have and depends on the tuning of the guitars and all that stuff. All right, let me sum it up. We're hitting a compressor in the beginning to even out all the peaks before we hit the distortion. Then we're using Mammoth and you will get the exact same preset, but again, Every bass sounds different, so you have to adjust it accordingly to your bass guitar. But you will get this preset, including the Christian Cola Dangle Dangle IR. This plugin is making both the clean low end and the distortion. Wonderful. Then we hit another compressor, again evening out things a little bit. And finally, we hit my broadband EQ, um, where I can control the deep bass, uh, the lower mids, the woody lower mids that I usually don't like on bass guitars, uh, the dangle dangle and the high end grind. Okay, so let's have another listen to the final bass tone in our mix and listen how solid the low end sounds first of all and listen secondly how easily you can hear everything that the bass plays and third thing is it sounds really fucking brutal. Isn't that lovely? Dirty bass is fun, and I hope you can get this plugin and get my preset and my IR so you can have fun with it yourself. It's very powerful. That's the first thing. You can also win this plugin. You have to subscribe to my email list. You will find a link below one to my email list, and you'll find another link where you can buy the plugin. Whatever. Both things are cool. Try to win it or just buy it if you want that dangle dangle. What else? Subscribe to this channel, please, so I can do more videos and ring the bell, ding dong. Leave a comment, let me know what you want me to do in the future. Once again, bass needs to be brutal, bass needs to be dirty. Thanks a lot for watching. As usual, see you in hell, motherfuckers.